Israel's southern communities bordering the Gaza Strip are feeling the brunt of the more than month-long military operation against Hamas. Some farming communities have become ghost towns over the past month as the border region became a front line with rockets and mortars fired from Gaza and parts of the region declared a closed military zone. Anger is now building in border communities because of the off-and-on nature of the fighting and the long-running diplomatic attempts led by Egypt to end Israel's third war with Hamas since 2009. Last week, Benny Gantz, the Israeli military's chief of staff, told people in the area it was safe to return to their homes because a three-day ceasefire had been declared. But when the ceasefire wasn't extended, militants in Gaza began firing over the border again, sending residents running back into bomb shelters. Kibbutzim, or collective farms in the border region, are now adding up the losses from damage to their property caused by either the Israeli military or Hamas. Israel's finance minister, Yair Lapid, has offered border communities some subsidies and tax breaks to defray their costs from the war. However, the Israeli government is resisting having Operation Protective Edge, its offensive against Hamas, officially declared a war because the definition would make the state responsible for paying full compensation to people who lost property. People in the border towns are used to conflict and the threat of rocket fire or tunnel warfare from Gaza. But they say this war has hurt them harder than Israel's two previous ones because it has gone on longer and produced so many false hopes that it was coming to an end. The resentment building in the South sounds a rare sour note during a war that has largely united the Israeli public behind Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel's avowed struggle to weaken Hamas. However, it could become a sign of things to come if the diplomacy fails and Israel and Hamas return to fighting an even longer war of attrition in Gaza. John Reed, Financial Times, Jerusalem.